Hey guys, Pastor Clamp here. And Giselle. And this is... Tofu, Tofu Soup. Soup! Where we let our thoughts simmer. Yes, alright. Thank you so much. So, um, before anything else, let's start with our tofu. So, we have our tofu soup of the day. Yeah. A little toast for our tofu soup. Let's go. So, what do we have? What's our tofu soup of the day? Tomka. Tomka. Last time was Tom Yum. So, now we're here for our Tomka soup. Let's give it a try. If you ever do Sundubu, I want an invite. Mm, that's good. Hey, we're open for donation and sponsors. <laughs> if you want to sponsor our tofu soup. If you cook a really good tofu soup, let's let do it. Yes, let us know. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, that is actually it's pretty good. A lot of flavor. <laughs> okay, save some for the end though. Y- yeah, well, we will. We will. Because yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of things we have to talk about. It. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, welcome everyone for our second episode mm-hmm. right, of our um, tofu soup pod. And um, thank you so much for joining us in our um, first episode. That was epic. We received a lot of good feedbacks from you guys. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for sharing our um, videos, our contents, our Spotify uh, audio. <laughs> thank you for supporting the, uh, us. And, uh, but also, I received a lot of questions about why tofu soup, <laughs> right? So, Giselle, um, shed us some light about it. I know it's your idea. <laughs> White tofu soup, all yeah. of a sudden, and what's the r- direction of our pod? Yeah. Well, the podcast is designed to be just a place where we can come together and talk about some really interesting topics. Mm-hmm. And w- what I thought when I thought about that was, um, like, soup is something that you come around and you gather and you talk, you have conversations, you enjoy it, and it's it's something that simmers. So, like, it just you dwell on it, wow. and like this. this flavors develop and all these things and we also happen to be based in Murano Hills where the hills look like they're covered with like tofu chunks like the rocks the rocks rocks. (laughs) tell me you don't think about that I know what you mean (laughs) no (laughs) so that's the inspiration for tofu soup Uh, but right now obviously it's mostly just about coming together and having a space where we can talk about life's big questions Mm. and navigate it together Right, and I think that is that is really important. You mentioned about you know, just to talk about things mm-hmm. that is really relevant in our age as young adults and young professionals. And that is really important. Authenticity is really important for our spiritual growth, mm-hmm. and um, to have this avenue or channel or you know for us to talk about things with all honesty and authenticity. Yeah. I think it's really important for us to be relevant. Mm-hmm. And sometimes topics that we don't talk about often enough. Exactly. So. Exactly. Topics yeah. not for the pulpit in a way. <laughs> That's true. That, that is so true. So, but still belong in but the church. S- yes. Still, and the church has to right. talk about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, you might be wondering that we have another person which is really special. Uh, you might be, you know, asking who's that guy. <laughs> and hey, we have a real, really special guest, um, a, a good friend of mine, also an elder of this church. No other than Joral. Joral Tulsi, I know. Yay. So, yeah, Joral, tell us about you. Who are you? Describe yourself and what do you do for fun? Um, so, if I were to, de- to describe uh, myself, um, I people have always told me I'm a, a jack of all trades in kind of way. Right. Uh, it's because I, I, I hop around a lot of different hobbies. Yep. Um, but I never like stick around really long enough to be like super good at them. <laughs> I just get kind of really involved and true. then I, I step to the side. I, I'm sure I, you're good I get at some of your hobbies. Yeah, but not so like many. top tier because right. people that are top tier at mm-hmm. like anything, that's like the only thing that they do. Okay. You know, usually mm-hmm. that's like uh, their go to like any one percenter of any like hobby, activity, yeah. sport, right? So um, yeah, I like to engage in a few hobbies mm-hmm. like. Uh, uh, there was jujitsu for a while. Yep. That's not as frequent nowadays, um, mm-hmm. but that happened. Uh, the whole mechanical keyboard scene. I don't know if you know what that is. <laughs> right. Yep. Um, yeah, some like PC gaming here on the side, and <laughs> uh, fish tanks, coral reef tanks. Um, just yeah, yeah some vinyl really collecting here range. and there. It's just I don't know whatever um, dabbles or 
like I, I feel like dabbling into yeah. I just I don't know I want to explore I guess <laughs> some people have said that uh like it's for healing your youth mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um if you didn't get like a lot of stuff when you were a kid now you want to like get into everything because you cool. couldn't do it before because like you know like financial stuff with mm. parents and work which is very valid um i didn't see my parents too much when i was little because they were working so much mm. but their uh the fruits of their labor i think were were worth it it's just i think a necessary sacrifice and then, um yeah i immigrated to the states when i was, was i don't know how far back <laughs> I, no, i'll tell you this i it was born in the philippines immigrated to the states when i was five or six lived in texas for a year mm. um got up moved with family over here to southern california and have pretty much been in like the loma linda area since ever since yeah yeah i mean uh i just want to let you guys know we're good, close friends and he's a fun guy um whatever you know interests you for sure he knows that <laughs> he knows that whatever sneakers or jujitsu by the way we're doing jujitsu together have you ever seen a pastor and an elder roll with each other? No. Uh, yeah. yeah, we are doing that. <laughs> but yeah, it's been fun. And it's been fun to be with this guy. It's so fun. And um, yeah. So today, we're going to talk about a really s special or important and sensitive topic. Mm, yeah. For, for our church, which, which is... Yeah, so for young people, there seems to be a lot of pressure nowadays uh, to move away from religion, from church, from um, faith traditions, and things like that. And what is your perspective on that? And can you share a little bit of your own story with your relationship with the church and um, this kind of community? Okay, and so just to reiterate, like you're asking why it feels like a lot of young adults are like leaving, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then yeah. Um, how I've experienced or have at least seen that in my own regard. So, mm -hmm. um, for me, I have been an Adventist since I was born. My parents were Adventists, right? So to some people, how, how could I really claim that I'm an Adventist if I don't really even know what that means? Mm -hmm. um, which is a little bit of a fore foreshadowing, I think, for me and a lot of other people that have maybe um, felt like leaving the church, right? So mm -hmm. I think that from the get-go, um, there's not much decision-making left for the kids, mm for what to 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 add value for the things that they do in front of the church wow. i think wow. so i i think it's beautiful when we have kids like you know sing a song or say scripture it's cute because we have verses that's like you know be like children and let the yeah. children come to me and it looks it looks nice um but you mean like for little kids to do things up yeah there. little kids to do things right. teenagers too <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So little kids, right? Uh -huh. So, um, and we like to think that this is all really giving them a sense of value towards the religion itself, which I think it teaches them about it for sure. But when there's not a lot of choice aspect and it's just something you got to do, then it doesn't really like build up much, right? So mm -hmm. that's I think mm -hmm. one of the one of the early things. Um. And as I guess time goes on, I feel like the church in itself has become uh, a house of guilt. Mm. A lot of guilting Ooh. going on. Wow. Um, wow. Because I, at least as I grew up, and I think this is, and I've said it before, like it's, I don't even blame our, our parents that much, to be honest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We can always take it a generation back and a generation back and a generation back mm -hmm. about people being very like salvation by works, right? Their mm -hmm, mm -hmm. hell is always used as a scare tactic. And it's, I, I know there, there's like a talking of like the burning and all that stuff and et cetera. So it, it'd be, it could be, it could be very scary. And right. I don't imagine anyone wanting to be in that situation but also it, it gets misconstrued with like dante's inferno and the way people see that mm -hmm. but like the hell that i i believe we understand hell to be is not the dante's inferno mm. kind of hell mm -hmm. right um but there's a lot of fear used and then that fear i think uh transformed to like i don't want any of my my family or kids being in there so you better do as the bible says mm. uh or else you're gonna you're going to hell mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um so a lot of guilting for uh things that people may or may right. may not be doing which 
it, in a way, it's for it's for good, right? Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you want to make sure that your your people are saved and stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, it's like I don't, well intentioned, but it, it's it, not really sustainable. Yeah, because I mean, if you took out religion from a kind of relationship where guilt is always used, you call it like toxic right mm-hmm. it's like you go to this person and then all they say is like you should be doing this for me you should be doing this for me you should be doing this for me and you don't want to hang around that anymore right. so then the moment where um kids are past teenagers um get their own cars go to college they're like i want out i'm tired of feeling guilty for all these things mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um especially when like Whoa. i don't know about it's as true. much now but before adventism is a very much like you can and you can't do this Right. Like that's what we were, I guess, like known for <laughs> yeah. in a way. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think a lot of people are leaving because of uh, a guilt aspect and being mm. sick of it. And then towards a, a bigger pot, pouring that into a bigger pot, um, lack of like uh, substance from going to church right. in a way. Mm. Um, I know that's that. Good. Some That's churches true. get flack for being very progressive sometimes, mm-hmm. but at some of those churches, they're preaching messages much more relevant to uh, like the the young adults of, of right. today. So people hang around there a little mm-hmm. bit more. That's right. That's right. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for sharing that. I think it's more um, as I was listening to that, I can see a a religious trauma from the past mm. and it has been a baggage from generation mm. to generation and and it seems like we i mean we thought that it's just church but it, it actually it, it it gives a negative impact in the lives of our young people so yeah yeah but yeah um well thank you for that but now, now we often hear about the decline in religious affiliation among among our age young adults I'm going to give you a survey. <laughs> um, sur- survey shows that nearly 59% of millennials who were raised in church, well, millennials is the biggest population today um, that is working, you know. Um, 59% of millennials who were raised in church have dropped out at some point in their lives. And s- s- almost 64% of the millennials population do not attend church regularly. And only two in 10 millennials believe that church attendance is important. Now, can you shed some light on what could be causing this trend in some ways? So, so I guess to add to the whole like religious trauma that you mentioned, right? I think that um, at least today people are becoming too smart for God. Mm-hmm. And I mean that in a sense of mm-hmm. like some people have brought up that... Um, the, I think we call it like the gap God, mm. whatever that we can't explain through like science itself or whatever. That's what we just like mm. call God. Right. Mm-hmm. So then people are maybe falling into like, we're too advanced as a society to believe in like just this deity. Mm-hmm. I think that's part of it. I, I think there's, there's so many reasons. I honestly think that people will like decline mm-hmm. and fall right. out. Mm-hmm. But as for like what I've, seen i think mm-hmm. those are the the two biggest ones right. or th- i guess three if you count like the whole mm-hmm. substance and not really you know messages wise too not so not so relevant it's relevant to somebody for sure for, for sure, sure. <laughs> um that's what we still have two in ten yeah <laughs> it's but, sad though it's, this is sad but uh, you know yeah yeah, yeah. another thing another thing another thing <laughs> that i think gets in the way is um when it comes to like certain like normalcy topics like tradition based wise mm-hmm. mm. as traditions change um uh, a more conservative perspective might say like hey that doesn't belong mm-hmm. and then people want to dip out of something like that like the first time i saw something being like sold at a church I was like, whoa, <laughs> what's <Right>. going on? <laughs> Satan is here. I got to get something. out. I was like, this is, we're done for. And then I actually immediately right. texted one of the pastors I knew. I was like, hey, explain this now. I need to understand. Mm-hmm. I think I'm missing something. Mm-hmm. And then he talked about like, you know, people actually like bought and sold 
on the Sabbath regularly, Jesus was upset at the temple because people were trying to sell salvation, mm. because people were trying to sell, hey, mm-hmm. buy my sheep. This is the better uh, sheep. This is how you can really please God yeah. by buying this one mm-hmm. because it's the widest, it's the best one. Yeah, it's more expensive. So the, the whole selling of salvation, I think, is, is at least they were explaining to me from the context that they knew that verse from. Mm. Um, and I mean, they're... Uh, they have studied the ministry mm. more than I have. So I've only, my my study of ministry is limited to children's stories that I've heard over and over through the years. And then the random texts that get brought up in, um, in the Bible through mm-hmm. like the service, Sermons. which is another thing actually that alludes a little bit to the your previous question. Like with it being spoon fed, religion adventism Mm. god spoon fed to us Mm. um we never really took the chance to 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 bite on our own if that Mm. makes sense Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like scoop it up and put it in your mouth voluntarily Mm because um and i i think i talked about it during resurrection sabbath i was getting uh like numb to the the story of the resurrection right because i've heard it so many times and i'm like Mm. i get it he died. He rose up. <laughs> yada, 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 yada. Yes, I'm forgiven. I'm yeah. so bad. I think that's part of it too, man. It's a story that's... <laughs> like you, you get are sinful. Old, and yeah, yeah like, like... still the guilt, the guilt ship. Yeah, right? kind of into yeah. the guilt ship thing. Or guilt ship? Like I don't know. Guilting? I just made it guilt up. Guilting. Trip. Or, guilt trip. Guilt trip. Guilt trip ship. Ooh. The ship to the, the guilt ship. The ship to the guilt but, um, trip. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's part of it too. But And then like uh societal norms in terms mm. of like homosexuality mm. also mm. because um it it hurts me when people carry the the signs that says like god hates gays oh like i i don't like stuff like that and then when right. when people portray god as like a hateful mm-hmm. god the only thing that i guess we can say that god hates is like sin right not even mm-hmm. the sinner we talk about that right right but um stuff like that where uh, you know, we've had I've had friends bring up that like, you know, in a if a child was brought up in a in a gay couple, but they're so much healthier functioning, mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. actually love each other. Because some heterosexual couples here that have kids don't love each other. Yep. And that's a yep. that's maybe even a worse household to be in. Mm-hmm. I was in a dev psych class that the professor was like, uh, there was a test question and it wasn't on anything written. It was something he said in class. He's like, what is the most important thing you can do for your children? And then I was like, I don't know, love them. And I wrote that down. And he corrected it. He was like, no, love your spouse. Ooh. Right? Loving your spouse and seeing That's love true. with your parents is like um, the best thing that they could ever uh, mm-hmm. like do for you. Or mm-hmm. if you're a parent, the best thing you can do for your kids is show love over and over again. Um, and then if that's achievable in a like homosexual relationship, mm-hmm. and then we're giving so much flack mm-hmm. for that relationship compared to like all the other sins, um, <laughs> like why aren't we marching around with God hates xyz sin right because right. i think it's mm-hmm. we, we went over when we went over, yeah. went over this topic there's a long yeah. list of stuff uh-huh. <laughs> not just homosexuality but it's it, such a hot topic it, it is a part of a list enumerated yeah. you know all the sins and sometimes we just highlight a specific sin just because we don't have that right and i think that's another that underlines one of the things that people don't appreciate about church anymore is mm. the hypocrisy there's just mm. so much uh it, it seems like we value one thing we, we say one thing we do another right. and that that's the general impression that i get when i talk to people who are like oh church mm, mm. i don't really do that they're just they're very judgy and they don't really they don't follow the spirit of the things that they say they believe yeah now, now that you mentioned that i think there's a need of I mean, the church wasn't that authentic because, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that all <laughs> churches are like this, but, but there seems <laughs> we that, hope not. We hope yeah, not. I mean, you know, because it seems like there's less value on authenticity mm. and um, relevancy and uh, inclusivity in our church. Uh, there's lesser, lesser emphasis on that. And, and, and we just want to save the norm. And instead of like, this is what I've learned from from one of my class too. Like, you know, when we when we do church, are we are we really promoting Christ or the church? Because hmm. you know, because sometimes we're just defending our church, 
while not showing the real love of Christ. And right. I think that is something, you know? Ooh. And it seems like authenticity and inclusivity is um, sort of reshaping the values of our young adults. Because mm-hmm. we need that. You know, we, we, we that's a need, like yeah. a level of authenticity. You know yeah, the, just the relatability. Because right. if, if you remove any kind of church or God, and I'm just having a conversation with someone, Mm-hmm. And we're not vibing or relating. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to talk anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want to listen. I'm like, okay, I think right. we're seeing very different things here. Or mm. you're really into that, but I'm not really into that that much. There's not really much of a conversation to it, have here. It creates a wall. Do you, do you think so? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say so. And then I think people can feel when someone's being True. genuine mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, up there on stage, which. Gives me another little sidetrack. I mm-hmm. I hear flack for like progressive churches that have like drums and lights. They're like it's just a performance. But little do they know in the traditional church, it's just as much a performance <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> right. Like looking holy is a performance, Ooh. dude. You know, like uh, <laughs> I hate yep. wearing ties and suits, <laughs> but I do. And I don't know if that's right that I do it because I'm like so I should. <laughs> right. um, but I don't know. Yeah, you're dropping yeah. it. You're dropping it. Drop it. Drop it, Charles. Because <laughs> I think that's you know in connection to that. I think that's my next question. Because um, you know how can churches respond to these changing dynamics and better connect with our with our young people, with our mm-hmm. young adults? You know, we're, we're partnering because we're partners um, on reaching out. We're planning things together. Um, he's our young young adult youth elder and i'm in charge for the young people as well as a pastor so um what do you think how can we yeah. relate to them I mean, this like changing... some practical strategies yeah for... um first thing is realize that what we have been doing needs to stop because it's not working at all people are running mm. faster than ever mm. before you know running away faster than ever before um and then being vulnerable i think True. Um, is going to be the biggest aid because the way the I think the next generation up, they don't like exposing themselves hmm. because um, they're older. You know, they, they, they're they supposed to be like more wise, more correct and stuff, which yeah. I get. It's it's a little bit on like maybe like an egotistical kind of way that I'm not as susceptible to the same sins mm-hmm. you are because you're more youthful than I am and haven't mm. learned as much. <laughs> So it's hard to be in oh, no. in like uh, an authentic relationship with people that you feel think that way. Mm-hmm. So I think people need to be okay being more vulnerable up front mm-hmm. because when people shut themselves off at church and don't want to... Ex- you don't have to like expose everything, but you know <laughs> what I mean? Like... Yeah. Um, it's just church now is like supposed to be for perfect people, Oof. which is never meant <laughs> yeah. to be that way, right? right? So It's really easy to come to church and just smile and say, hi, doing good, how are you, <laughs> and yeah. happy Sabbath, or mm. whatever it is that you say when you go into church, but how mm. hard is it to actually build a relationship? How hard is it to actually have a friend? And what churches really should be is about is community, right? Yeah. Right. And that the takes work. Mm. Mm-hmm. And vulnerability. So, yeah. yeah, it does. Because I, I have a hard time being a friend to someone that, like, they haven't opened up mm-hmm. even a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, I think for me, I would say that as we reach out and empower our young people, we need to stop treating people as projects. Mm. Yeah. And treat people as people. Mm-hmm. That, you know, that, that, that has pain, that has... B- baggage and yeah, just trauma, like us. And just like us because i think even jesus touched those um those things he didn't come as um as a king and, and do some projects and accomplish some things no <laughs> that's why my point here is that stop treating people as projects you know it always irked me when i would hear uh like a pastor talk about a mission trip they came from and mm-hmm. the only thing I hear about is how many people they baptized. Baptized, mm-hmm. baptism. I was like, uh, yay. <laughs> but uh, what else? Like, right. what about them as the person that, mm-hmm. yeah. like the individual, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I just mm-hmm. keep seeing numbers yeah. and I don't really know mm-hmm. what that truly means. Yeah. How long is that going to last? Mm-hmm. They're baptized mm-hmm. now. Do they really even understand God yeah. for who? 
he really is or did you just come with like a bunch of stuff and they're like praise your god mm. you've given us all these things like right yeah y- you know that some people yeah. have like like uh like some atheist people that i ran into during dental school like have brought that up they're mm-hmm. like dude these people just convert to whatever religion just came most recent because mm-hmm. they just brought the most stuff <laughs> and i was like you know i i can't say yes or no to that. <laughs> um, i wouldn't really know but yeah. that's a valid point i guess mm-hmm. and then we need to really reconsider our approach and like is is that really our goal it shouldn't be mm-hmm. but yeah. if that's what we're achieving that's the only thing that we're achieving we need to change it and so on that note trying to turn it toward more the positive side have you noticed any in your life as a young person who's in a church what how what impact does it have on you being part of a community has it had any positive impacts is there value to being part of mm. a community like this i think for me as remnant of the remnant in a way mm-hmm. of course, yeah. Adventist remnant, yep. mm-hmm. even more so um i think i did see value in a in a way of being able to like go to someone that is dealing with the same questions as i am mm-hmm. um i still find the value in um believing in jesus and god yeah um, mm-hmm. i think that's really important like that hasn't like lost right it's it's touch i mean there's been some like wavy mm-hmm. stuff for sure where it's like what is this jesus stuff god stuff anyway is is this just the gap god that people have talked about mm-hmm. but um having i guess opened myself up and being more vulnerable and then other people mm-hmm. also having that question because we're all kind of here ish um yeah there was the value mm-hmm. there yeah. i'd yeah, say yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah especially if you're you know I think Christ- Christianity doesn't have to be lonely, and um, mm-hmm. a, a community like this helps a lot with our spiritual growth as well. Knowing that, um, that as you mentioned, you have some people around you that supports you, yeah. and knowing that you know when things fall, th- they're there to pick me up. Yeah. Another thing too sure. is with so many, so few mm-hmm. young adults that we have. I get asked to do a bunch of stuff, <laughs> um, like sermons and like reading out on stuff, and um, which could be intimidating for role. some other people, but for you, it's a I mean, welcome for, challenge. It's definitely intimidating in the beginning, but at some point, it clicked in my head, and I'm like, who else are they gonna ask? Because <laughs> there's few of there's us. So few, and then yep. in in a way, mm-hmm. me being not forced, but like inclined to have to do all these activities mm-hmm. i've been opening up having my more bible. opportunities yeah i've been ha- i've been opening up my bible so much more like um like when clint asked me to like lead for vespers and stuff i was like i guess i gotta read the whole book i don't want to <laughs> like not know what i'm talking about <laughs> if i'm gonna lead this and then right. when i did lead it there was like one person that showed up <laughs> but which is fine which is fine yeah sorry like, about that's that like, <laughs> no, no, that's cool. giselle didn't show up Listen, listen. She could have actually. She admitted to me after. She's like, you know, I could have made it, and I was like, thank you. Right. Um, I have okay, closure. Okay, we're gonna cut that from the record. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I think I've I've read more, I've understood more, and then I get mm. more of my questions yeah. answered. I think that's true for me. That life is hard, and life is especially hard as a young adult. I mean, it's hard in every season, but we have very unique challenges we have so many questions we're still building our identity we're figuring out all these new relationships we're trying out our career for the first times Mm. and this is a time where you need a support group and in a way i think that's what church one of the functions of church is and is to to lead you to be closer both to your fellow journeying people Mm. and to god who is wanting to support you through it all and i know a lot of people who are struggling with the same things as me and sometimes I wish, I wish you had the support that I have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the support that I find mm. in my church, even as dysfunctional and doesn't have to be interesting perfect. Yeah. and, yeah. you know, with all mm. its quirks and flaws that I, I have found benefit. Mm. I found growth in being mm. a part of this kind of group. Yeah. That's the tough part, man, because once someone drops like a fly, it's so easy to just one at a time, like mm. you just stop oh. going. Stop I thought going. you meant like drops a fly. No, 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 like just drop stuff. like a fly, like I get swatted, <laughs> you know, 
with truth <laughs> that they leave. I think you you preached <laughs> uh, one time with that, right? Like the, the light. Remember that light? Oh yeah. Just having that share. share I was more like, about I was like, we often talk about Jesus is the light. Well, I have a flashlight here. It was like some heavy duty flashlight. Right. And I shown it in like the front row's face. I was like, "Do you love Jesus? Do you like Jesus? Do you see this is Jesus right here?" And then it hurts to a point where you don't even want to look at Jesus mm. because people are shoving it in your face so hard mm-hmm. that. But um, like if we see how Jesus preached, that's not how he preached. You know? Yeah, he was very solemn. He was smart though because the Pharisees were trying to get the Romans involved to get him killed. But <laughs> you know, Jesus would respond in like you know question of a question and stuff like mm. that. Um, he definitely had his, I guess you could say like, he's, I don't know about condemning, but you would call it rebuking. That's the word. Yeah. Right? That, yeah that's um, the word. Which I think people have a hard time differentiating condemning and rebuking because people mm-hmm. like, we can't really condemn because we're uh-huh. not like pure and like, mm-hmm. we don't have the full knowledge and understanding that God does. Right. Right. He's the ultimate judge on judgment day. Um, but like I think people may feel like they need to rebuke somebody, and then their way of rebuking is is pushing people away instead because it's the whole like guilt thing that I talked mm-hmm. about before. Um, so I don't know. I think that's another question I'm gonna have in the future is as a, a Seventh Day Adventist, as a believer in Jesus, I know we're called to we are called to yeah. rebuke, mm-hmm. but like what does that really look like? Is it like a gentle re- mm-hmm. realignment? like a straight a straightening <laughs> of the direction how yeah. do we how do we speak like, the truth in love right kind of yeah, yeah how, mm-hmm. how are you gonna it's a very hard mm. balance to strike yeah because like, i think there's also I, I think dealing with that i think there's proximity proximity relationally yeah you can't be pers- someone out of the blue no being like hey no uh, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know? right right get right. in line right and that's what happens in some churches right yeah you're just sucks. saying that people True. are preaching from the pulpit hey you're doing this 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 wrong and not mm. seeking to have proximity exactly. with the people that they're talking to it doesn't without even the context of the person yeah you, like, you wouldn't just do that to someone off the street you wouldn't mm-hmm. just be yeah. like hey which you. what people do <laughs> right and i hate those signs because i think they're <laughs> making jesus look so bad yeah mm. i want to yeah. i want to carry a sign that says like jesus loves gay people yep Right next to him, because right I think that's to way more. <laughs> I feel like that'd be a little aggressive <laughs> to be right next to the other people with a sign and just like showing signs at each other. Mm. Maybe we should do away with signs after all. Yeah, maybe no signs. Yeah. We'll leave the signs uh, to yeah. the prophecies and <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> leave right. the signs with the times. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, um, so I'm talking about just to you know to wrap this up. Um, what are practical ways to invite or engage? Our young with our young people, you know, as a church. In your experience, what what have you seen to be effective and sustainable you know, as we engage? Exemplifying the value I see in Jesus from a day to day life mm. is a lot more attractive than just always preaching about it. True. Um, because evangelism is not always like third world reaching out, right? It's like mm. local evangelism too, and I think we need to approach it mm. very differently. I think the a sustainable you bring up sustainable that we don't get tired you can't it you can't get tired just being yourself on mm-hmm. a day-to-day but under the influence of jesus mm. you know it's right. just a natural thing you do and people can pick up on it and see if they like it or not because like if if you believe in jesus you know like you have hope for the future mm-hmm. like even if your life might end tomorrow and later yeah. or the way Despite you look whatever. at things changes. Your yeah. perspective changes. And, and I think your life gets better even no matter what your circumstances is. You have that hope. You have the anchor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like I think to the right person that's attractive to see. Mm-hmm. Because um, I don't want to make a generalization that like, oh, people that don't believe just believe in Jesus and if they get bogged down, they're just forever bogged down. Mm-hmm. But yeah. like... I don't want to make that statement. I don't think that's entirely true. Mm. But I think that the hope that it is instilled in you is visible. Mm. Like you like you were mentioning. Like the the message starts with you. It's yeah. a it's a lifestyle thing. Rather yeah. than imposing it. Mm. You know? Yeah, and making it a mask. Uh, right. I gotta put my SDA mask on. <laughs> um and I'm mm. like this now. Um <laughs> they which, take it off. For the rest of the week. Yeah. <laughs> and um, 
yeah when i when yeah. i go up there and talk that's a thing i try not to do because i'm not very serious and i'm not very reverent <laughs> reverence <laughs> i don't i don't sure. exude reverence sure, sure, sure. <laughs> i mean we, i we, don't you know we, how pastor yeah. goes up there and he's like welcome I just can't because that's just not me. I go up like, yeah. "Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. How's everybody doing?" Uh-huh. The normal, just, like, yeah, normal yeah. relax. And my wife tells me, "They're like, dude, you're so casual <laughs> up there." And it's, and I'm like, I, "That's just how I'm speaking and talking. Uh-huh. Is that just <laughs> how I should be?" But it's it's hard because you don't want to be like super cash that you mm-hmm. like distract. Mm-hmm. from jesus right because right. that's supposed to be the whole i think there's a level of authenticity and being real at the same time showing christ community communicating yeah. christ yeah yeah right? it's uh, man dude this whole balance thing is probably the hardest thing Go, or, to do sometimes it's cultural okay mm-hmm. it depends on the on, on the on the environment yeah. and culture that we are building i mean there's yeah culture church to church too, yeah, yeah church to church tradition and culture isn't bad at all like it's like totally mm-hmm. evil i should say I think um, we, we. I mean, what I think is that th- there is a good thing about it if you are, you know. But I should say, I think we need to understand what is what is biblical and what is cultural, mm. right? Yeah, that's very important. Yeah. So, yeah, that's good. Because yeah. people will mix the two. Oh yes, because y- one of the best things I've heard also about church culture mm-hmm. is that it's unique and it's very specific and mm-hmm. churches are designed yep. to host people specific who believe people in worshiping group. a certain way mm-hmm. and that's why there's lots of them exactly. <laughs> because we have churches in different languages mm-hmm. or we have churches with certain styles of music mm-hmm. churches mm-hmm. were with certain programming or certain you know activities that they do together as a church right. mm-hmm. and that's not reflective of the type of church that you choose it kind of is up to you yeah yeah it's very individualized we, we it's are, meant to be that yeah, way we are building our own culture for example um here in marina hills uh, pastor Ab- abel and i are on one and you know we try to be i mean we are creating culture but we explain why we're building this culture i mean if we i think one one more thing is that if we create a culture, it has to be based in the Bible. Mm-hmm. You yeah. don't just create culture just because or, or maintaining a status. No, no, I think there has to be an explanation of each and also define that this is our culture. And um, mm-hmm. if the, this doesn't fit with your culture, then it's fine. Then it's okay. Then it's okay. Yeah. Because there's <laughs> a lot of churches that has different cultures and yeah. we celebrate cultures as yeah. well. You know, um, yeah. and we should try as, as much as we can to have unity, to get along exactly. with each other. But if there is something that you just like, oh, I really don't like, I don't know, the the color of the lights. It's yeah. really it's too warm. <laughs> I want cooler <laughs> lights. Go to a church with cool lights. That's OK. Right. I, I think understanding that that's OK gives a lot of freedom and saying mm-hmm. I can still have a community and it just may not look like the traditional church that mm-hmm. I used to go to or I think people want me to go mm-hmm. to. But I need to find a community that still right. follows Christ, that still points you to God in a, a way that you're okay with. And the good thing with that too, if we define which is cultural and biblical, there is an avenue and space for us to progress. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's easier to, it's easier deal, to, with it. to deal with it. You know, <laughs> rather than mm-hmm. we blend the two, then um, you know you can't move the piano. <laughs> it has to be there because, and some people would say that that is like they mix biblical and um, culture with that. Like the piano has to be here forever and ever mm-hmm. till Jesus comes. What? And um, you I know, don't think I, they had pianos <laughs> back when the Bible was written. So, so that's my point. I think by defining and explaining things yeah. to the people and and individuals right. if you create culture because um, yeah it will give freedom and give space for progress yeah. and growth and you don't have to align with the culture to be part of a church exactly if you if you can live with differences of other people which i think is a part of just being human mm-hmm. and being in any community mm-hmm. then you can still be a part of a church and you can still have all the joy, the community, the support that comes with it, even despite your differences. Because there will always be differences. Yeah. You know, I think about that uh, Vespers we had about, like, those, the, was it seven churches? Yeah, yeah. Seven. They all had their own cultures, and each one had their own drawback and was corrected in their very individual ways. But 
I mean, there's still churches and ideas still to like yeah. praise God, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I just quick snippet. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, that was a great talk. Uh, now we're moving to our next segment. Guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm going to explain. Uh, I'll ask the question and then you guys can take the sips of soup if okay. it applies to you. Sure, sure. So I'm going to give you like yes or no questions. Oh, if it's you should yes, be part of it. No, it's okay. I'll ask the question. <laughs> I'll eat my soup after we cut. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. But sure. Um, if the answer is yes, take a bite of soup. Mm-hmm. If no, then just wait till the next one. Sure. <laughs> Hopefully okay. you get yeses so you can taste the soup. <laughs> Enjoy it, yeah. <laughs> oh, All enough. right. The question it's is, as a young person, have you ever questioned your faith? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> And I would say, it's be- it's beautiful. <laughs> I think there's beauty on it if you question your faith rather than following a tradition blindly. Mm. I think what we have, I know, as as um, our, our faith, we should treat faith not you know because some people are you know faith is being like following as a blind person like you can see. No, I think it, there's beauty on it. On it, faith is based on trust, which exactly. is based on knowledge. Exactly, and that is one of the best advice. Uh, pieces of advice that I got when I was young um, from one of my mentors and they told me I was saying like I have questions about this I just don't know if I believe it and they were Mm. like great I was like I wanted an answer I thought you were supposed to teach me the answers and they're like no you need to question this this is important for you Um, as a young person have you ever considered leaving the church or religion at one point yeah (laughs) yeah yeah for you for you I don't think I ever wanted to like leave. I just wanted an answer. Mm-hmm. Mm. I was like, I think I'm, I'm pretty wow. sure God is real and that I think the way Adventism approaches the Bible is what I feel most comfortable with. <clears throat> I haven't valid. <laughs> gone other like full on converted to other religions that also use the Bible. But, you know, they, they give us like world religion classes and stuff which mm-hmm. isn't completely comprehensive for sure yeah but um yeah i don't think i've ever wanted to leave <laughs> the idea of god i just wanted to understand so i knew that my belief wasn't wasted mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if that makes sense yeah. that i'm believing in nothing yep um <laughs> which i know we won't get all the answers questioned but i'm okay with like certain questions that I am aware cannot be answered until mm-hmm. I talk to Jesus. Yep, yep. But but there are questions that are valid. Yeah, then I think can be answered, and I feel like a lot of young adults have the same questions. It's just mm-hmm. they're not getting a good enough answer because I don't think people have studied the Bible and God enough to give a good enough answer mm-hmm. because it stems from that whole spoon feeding thing mm-hmm. from day one that some people's religious studies solely come from. Bible stories through church mm-hmm. and classes they had to take because they went to private school. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And maybe they've opened their Bible once or twice, mm-hmm. which is why these small groups are super mm-hmm. important, I think. But yep. yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. As a young person, have you ever at some point judged other people for leaving? No. <laughs> um, Go ahead. I, I guess I'll, I'll say <laughs> that. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I just grew up in the church and i don't know maybe i i have that pastoral thing and I'm not really like judging more of like i'm more of like concerned why i want to ask them i'm more interested why and want to check hey yeah what's what's up why and um is there something that we need we can do that we can do about our change right um i i i don't i don't want to say judgment i'm like <laughs> you're so bad <laughs> right, right. you <laughs> left but i was you like going to hell but in my mind i was like how could you give up like <laughs> i feel like we're onto the truth here and like you know like we're so close mm. at least maybe because that's how i felt about myself but then when people mm. decide to go i'll be like like why mm. i don't know if you call that judgment <laughs> but i was also <laughs> like i don't <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> it's hard Maybe to understand. Maybe a dash, a dash yes, of judgment. Yes. Like, dude, come on, why? <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. Like, you, <laughs> you know you. better yeah. than we this. We appreciate mm. the real talk. Um, you, I think you should stick yeah. around, and then I'll see, like, traits of 
things people have warned me about mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. terms of like pride wise and stuff but that <laughs> there's a lot of details in that <laughs> yeah, <I guess>. yeah. <laughs> okay as a young person have you ever engaged in secular activities I'm not sure what you meant by that one, Pastor Clint. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I think that means activities that Jesus no. is not the center. <laughs> and I think we all have. Yeah, maybe <laughs> um, not worship appropriate. Oh. I'll take that. Well, like attending a concert? <laughs> attending, like, I don't think going to Disneyland is very Christ-centered. <laughs> yeah. Christ-centered. Very, centered. Um, you're like... People that I think are very conservative would say you're just worshiping the characters. <laughs> At least that's what I would hear Mickey. when I was like 12 or 13. Like, dude, you worship SpongeBob. I can see Hunter's <laughs> telling me this. I, not like actually, but I could see it. You know what I right, mean? Right, right. Like, you worship this character. You you watch that way more than you read the Bible. I'm like, can you imagine a 12 year old reading the King James version and being like, oh, I am enlightened. I cannot. Yeah. <laughs> well, have you ever disobeyed any traditional codes in your particular church or religion? Mm, like, um, like directly or like norm in our church. Like, yeah. Yeah. Without. <laughs> that is tough. That is a tough <laughs> one. Traditional <laughs> codes or not. Uh, I necess- wouldn't say so. Yeah, n- not necessary to be um, a moral. Okay, <laughs> let me let me let me try to think. It could be a yes or a, yes or a no. Yes, if um, if there are traditions that are clearly not in the Bible, for you know, just mm. just it clear. depends on what traditional. Case. Yeah, it, yeah, depends on yeah. what traditional. As long as it's not moral, mm. it's not biblical. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I I you know I'm a sinner, and um, I, I I commit some sins as well. As human being, and um, maybe not intentionally, or you know, but in some point, yes. Yeah, and for me, I I can see that um, there are a lot of weird traditions out there. There's a lot mm-hmm. of weird things that are commonly accepted, and mm-hmm. I've definitely not followed all of them. Yep. I think it'd be really hard to follow right. all of them, especially as some of them are contradictory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I I can't say that I fully followed yes, yes. all the traditions. Right. But for yeah. example, keeping the Sabbath. What does that mean? <laughs> There's a lot of oh, norm. I get what you're saying, right? <laughs> you so that's my soup? that's my take. I mean, it could, yeah, I would say yes, but there's a lot of norms and traditions. Not just in okay, not here in our church, but other churches. Mm-hmm. That's their code. Yeah, and that this church may not abide by. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. As a young person, have you ever tried something new at church only to receive pushback mm. from other church members? Every time, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am Real. okay. okay no, not not all the time. Okay, no, no, not all the time. it's just um, yeah. I am, I am a go getter. If some something pops in my head, I really want to share it. Mm. I want to share it. I want to do this it. This is true. And, and I can't do it alone. Hey, I need help, but I mean, there's you know some people. I I can always receive pushback. Like, man, maybe not. You know. Yeah. I can accept that. Let me take my tofu. Um, if there's been pushback for anything I've done, I haven't heard it. <laughs> <laughs> but also, to be honest with you, whenever I'm like up there doing anything, mm-hmm. I try to keep it like I know what the traditional thing is for our church since mm-hmm. I've been here so long. I try not to like actively poke at it yep, yep. because I don't. You know how we talked about the the difference between tradition, yeah tradition and biblical and some mm-hmm. people may not be able to discern mm-hmm. i don't want my actions up there to make someone feel like i have right. ill will mm-hmm. and then in one way be like a stumbling block for them yes yeah. yes so That's i try to be point. like yeah. careful we save mm-hmm. the the hot topics for like vespers you know yep yep mm-hmm. have you ever been afraid or reluctant to invite your friends to your church yeah i think because my church might put off boring vibes because we're very mm. traditional. <laughs> Not even right. super traditional. We're fairly traditional. Mm-hmm. We're still yeah, on hymns yeah. and stuff. And trust me, sure. there's some very empowering hymns. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> like, coming again. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> I want to march. Yeah. I want to march. <laughs> yeah, it comes with a theme too. So, But hey, we are also singing. <laughs> Just singing. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah. yeah. I have also felt that where 
I, I don't know if I should bring my friends to my church. Uh, and I don't know if, if they would like it. I, I feel scared that somebody might judge them or they might yeah. feel judged. Uh-huh. And I don't uh-huh. want anyone to feel like that. Like maybe your friends will define you. Like, oh, this is your church? <laughs> oh, that too, yeah. You know, I was that, thinking that more fear? about how they would yeah. feel, but... <laughs> yeah. When, um, whenever is we this do... your vibe? <laughs> so this is what you believe? <laughs> Weird. <laughs> yeah, or um, I guess some would call me perfectionist, uh, but when something doesn't go wrong with the program, and if I have someone there, I feel like weird. So I'm like, I promise we do really good. <laughs> it's not always like that. Right. <laughs> which, um, which in a way is like, <laughs> yes, it's part of the vulnerability thing, but also it's like not super polished because like, we'll I'll, I'll go to the university church and mm-hmm. that thing is like, oh, it's spick span <laughs> production numbers, yeah, production high. level sermon mm-hmm. and just yeah. everything is very to a. You never hear their polished. mics squeal. <laughs> yeah, no squealing, no feedback. Um, which is everybody like, knows when to come on. <laughs> right. Yeah, which is which is like I guess you could call that a perfect <laughs> program in terms of like things going wrong. Right. But then that's really hard to achieve on a smaller scale when everyone here is like a volunteer. You know, <laughs> yeah. and that that might not be even their thing. They just got it's asked true. to do it, and they're like, oh, okay, I'm going to learn. Um, Only the pastors are, are paid here, so <laughs> just so you know. So I don't know if, like, I get worried if something is, like, not super smooth. But mm. that's also, also, I think that's because I don't visit a lot of churches. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I think about it, and I visited other small home churches, they mm-hmm. all have the same problem. Right. People yeah. don't click the slides at the right time all the time. And then <laughs> For sure. You always have, like, the click, 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 click. They don't have projectors. They're trying to find yeah, it. they can't hear the pastor <laughs> preach yeah. for the first five mm-hmm. minutes. Mm-hmm. All that stuff actually happens everywhere. And <laughs> yeah. I think it's just my exposure yeah. to, like, right. perfect programs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For me, I always, okay, mm-hmm. I'm, okay, I'm a little biased because, I mean, I'm a pastor this church, so I'm inviting people. I'm inviting you, but but I always mention to them that oh, this is a family church. Mm. Mm. Hey, being a family church has a lot of definition because there's a lot of baggage. <laughs> so I, meaning you know, if we say it's a family church, it doesn't have to be perfect. Mm. Just like a family, there yeah. are problems, there are issues, but we're trying to stick with each other because we're family, yeah. and that's what family is all about. So. I really like that. I think all. I, I think it would be great if churches could define themselves like a family or, right. or trying to be yeah. a, a functional family right. th- and that, that worships together. Right. Notice, in, in our family, you don't like every everybody buddy <laughs> in your family. You don't always get along. Yeah, yeah. Things yes. don't always go perfect. With your siblings, you always fight with, with your siblings. Yeah. <laughs> and it's fine. But you stick with each other because that's family. And yeah, you, that's what you, do. you know, open communication, you listen, mm-hmm. you say something, and that's how it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As a young person, have you felt acceptance and encouragement? Oh yeah, getting involved with the church. Oh, oh yeah, let me, <laughs> I said oh yeah, and then gave no details. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I hear a lot of stuff whenever I like talk up there. Like I think it was last week, Janice's dad came up to me. He's like, "Hey, pastor, great sermon." <laughs> like pastor? Uh, yeah, he's yes, like, I was like, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Gerald. I'm not a pastor. He's like. <laughs> Okay, it doesn't matter. And anyways, Aww. he's like, thank you for what you said or whatever. Mm. Not trying to like toot my own horn, but I was like, I'm not a pastor, you know? <laughs> um, and it, it was immediate. I was like, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a pastor. Because right. <laughs> I don't know. But um, Hey, you, you, I mean, you shared some good points too. So yeah. appreciate that. I think that's something that we should take away as people uh, who are in a church is that anytime someone who is a young person gets involved, hmm. that should be something worth celebrating. True. No matter what it is they do, if they do something <laughs> really yeah. weird or off or they don't come in at the right time, like mm. it should be celebrated and we should we should enjoy the fact that we are able to engage someone in this age yeah. group. You know, um, sorry, Clint. Yeah, I know you're on, about to say something. No, no, no. It's okay. Um, I was thinking if it, it was a little bit funny uh, where me included like uh, and then as grew up and as I grew up and then the other youth as they also like do songs and piano they get so stressed out at church mm. doing it at church which is mm. should be the least place that you get stressed out messing up or anything mm-hmm. but um I think giving the praise even if things yeah like don't go super good yeah, yeah. should be focused on like you should even never even more than 
Yes. Yep, yep, yes. yep, yep. One of my burdens is when I see someone getting involved in church who's like my age and then someone comes up to them afterward and they're like, thanks for helping, um, but next time? And she's like, really? There's not going to be a next time if you come yeah, at them. You know them. what I'm like, done. Like, yeah. no, no, no. It should be a thank you. Mm. And then once you build like a relationship, you know, there can be room for growth. Everybody's <laughs> going to grow, but everybody's going to start out a little rough, especially if being involved in church is not something that we're used to. Mm. So yeah. it should be a, a supportive environment. Yep. And we need to foster our, our relationships with young people. Yeah. And I don't want to, you know, I want to um, <laughs> shout out my, my home church, mm. yeah, the Aww. church that I grew up with. I mean, you know, I know they're so patient with me. I mean, they just when at a young age I started preaching at third grade. <laughs> yeah, third grade. They they let me preach in the pulpit, and I think that's empowering. That's empowering. I know I messed up, and mm-hmm. that wasn't that was bad. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> After I preached, I went straight to my room and cried because I know it was bad. Mm. So I know myself it was bad. But my parents, I mean, my dad, who's the church elder, comforted me like it's fine. You know, it's fine. Yeah. yeah, it was a mess. <laughs> it was Those a mess. Those words of encouragement <laughs> I know. matter. That so is so. Much. That is so Filipino Asian uh, <laughs> encouragement. Yeah, that was a mess, but you're good. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Do it again. Do it again. And you did it. And, you know, and, and it's. I think it's empowering. I, you know, I, I don't invalidate that. It's still good. It, it, it's still good. That's it. That's the last question I have. And yeah, so thank you again, Joral. Any last words? Any encouragement or any last words to our young adult viewers? Um, God is real. God still loves you. Um, I think you should be seeking him harder than last time. Hmm. Really looking for uh, a true connection with the Lord, not one that has been fostered through somebody else. Um, life can be very difficult moving forward and um, the only thing that will be and currently is stable is uh, is God himself mm. and, uh, and Jesus and his love for you come on now mm. so because there's people a lot of people will love you mm. in your lifetime but through no fault of their own they will fail you Mm. you know just that's just what humans do um and you're gonna fail somebody yourself too um but if you hold on to to jesus do all those things um i think you will see the light at the end of the tunnel yeah